Hi, I'm Erin McCarthy, Editor-in-Chief of MentalFloss.com. Welcome to Mental Floss Video, and did you know that telephone inventor Alexander Graham Bell also invented a metal detector to try to save President James Garfield's life? After the president was shot by Charles Guiteau in 1881, doctors were struggling to locate the bullet and spent a lot of time trying to find it by putting their dirty hands directly on Garfield's body. So Bell made an electromagnetic device with a handle and a telephone receiver that was supposed to alarm when the field was interrupted by metal. He used the device on Garfield twice, but never found the bullet. The fact that Garfield's mattress contained metal mesh probably didn't help. In the end, Garfield died not from the bullet wound, but because of an infection likely caused by being operated on by doctors who hadn't washed their hands. So even if Bell had found the bullet with his metal detector, it might not have made any difference. And Alexander Graham Bell's metal detector is just the first of many lesser known inventions of famous inventors that I'm going to share with you today. We mentioned the telephone earlier, but Bell wasn't the only person involved in its invention. Louis Latimer was a colleague of Bell's. He drafted the patent that Bell filed for the device. Latimer was also an inventor in his own right. In 1874, he patented a bathroom for a train, and in 1886, he patented an early version of an air conditioner. Back to Bell for a second. He broke a world record with a boat he'd created with fellow inventor Casey Baldwin. The hydrodrome was 60 feet long and traveled at 70 miles per hour. Fins under the boat helped it move at that unprecedented pace. Eventually, Bell hoped that this would lead to an aircraft that could lift off from the water. Speaking of boats, in 1898, notable pigeon enthusiast and Tesla coil inventor Nikola Tesla wowed the crowd at an exhibition in Madison Square Garden with a four-foot-long, battery-powered, remote-controlled boat. Tesla could control its propeller and rudder and even flash its lights using radio signals. At the time, not many people knew about radio waves, and the attendees were astounded. You could say that Tesla's invention made a big splash. I'm sorry. Tesla also had hopes of creating an aircraft. The last patent he ever received was for his helicopter plane. It would become airborne the same way as a helicopter with rotating blades. Once in the sky, the device would shift on its side and the blades would start acting like an airplane propeller. It also had wings like an airplane. Maria Beasley is best known for her inventions that improved barrel making and life rafts. Before her, life rafts were wooden and tended to sink. But she had a few lesser known inventions too, foot warmers, a bread kneader, and a device that prevented trains from derailing. Henry Ford was an innovator from a young age. Starting at around 13, he fixed watches for people in his community. To do so, he invented his own tools. He used nails, knitting needles, and even parts of a corset to make instruments like screwdrivers and tweezers. Later in life, Ford developed the soybean car. George Washington Carver's work with soybean plastics likely contributed to its development. It was made with 14 panels of plastic that had been created out of soybean and other crops. Ford presented the car in 1941, but World War II interrupted its momentum. Carver is best known for his work in the world of crops, but he also invented a cosmetic cream. He described it in the patent as a, quote, vanishing cream of any desired or usual tint. It was made of peanuts, contained salicylic acid and perfume, and had powder added for color. By the way, the patent for the cosmetic and the process used to create it was just one of three patents in his name, despite his many inventions and discoveries. The other two were related to producing paints and stains. If you're a Home Shopping Network or Jennifer Lawrence fan, you probably know of Joy Mangano, most famous for the Miracle Mop. She also invented performance platforms, a type of sneaker with a platform heel that's supposed to tone leg muscles, and huggable hangers, those thin velvet hangers that fit very closely together. Marion Croak is currently best known for being a VP of engineering at Google. She has over 100 patents related to voice over internet protocol, which is what allows us to Skype. Beyond that, she has 100 other patents. One is the process that gets used when someone donates to a charity over text message. Clarence Birdseye is known for creating the processes that allow for the entire frozen foods industry to exist. But he filed hundreds of patents in his lifetime. One was for a harpoon gun, and what set it apart from other harpoon guns was that it didn't recoil after you shot it, which didn't do much except for make shooting a little less annoying. While working at a paper bag company in the 19th century, Margaret Knight invented a device that mechanized the bag cutting and folding process. It also gave the bag's square bottoms a unique feature at the time. A year before she died, the New York Times declared that, quote, at the age of 70, Margaret is working 20 hours a day on her 89th invention, having already created a robe clasp, a numbering machine, and a dress shield to keep things from staining clothes. Of course, we have to get some Benjamin Franklin inventions in here. Like Ford, Franklin started young. 
When he was 11, he made 10-inch wooden paddles to attach to his wrists, which he hoped would help him swim faster. They worked, but they were too heavy, so they tired him out. In the mid-1700s, Franklin saw someone playing what were basically wine glasses with their fingers, so he created an instrument out of the concept, the harmonica. It had 37 glass bowls painted different colors for each note. You played it by pressing a foot pedal. That spun the bowls, which you'd touch with wet fingers. The harmonica became quite popular. Marie Antoinette learned to play, and Mozart and Beethoven both composed music for the instrument. But the harmonica's popularity didn't last. Its rise coincided with the fear that music, of all things, could cause headaches, hysteria, and death, especially for performers. The harmonica in particular became a scapegoat. Elizabeth McGee famously invented Monopoly as an anti-capitalist game known as the Landlord's Game, before Charles Darrow stole the idea and sold it to Parker Brothers. But she'd actually previously worked with Parker Brothers. They published her lesser-known, light-hearted card game Mock Trial in 1910. Now let's rewind the clock. Leonardo da Vinci designed a few inventions that he didn't create in real life, like the scuba suit. He hoped it would help with naval attacks. In fact, he kept it an extremely closely guarded secret because he thought it had so much military potential. The suit itself would be made out of leather and have tubes for air, and naturally there was a place for the wearer to pee. Also for the military, Leonardo da Vinci designed a crossbow with a width of about 80 feet. It would fire large objects like bombs, but the main goal was to freak out your enemies. Historians are still divided on whether a weapon that large could take out a dragon with magical powers. <sighs> so mad. So mad! <sighs> R.I.P. Regal. Leonardo sketched a robotic knight filled with gears and wheels in 1495. Winding a crank would make its arms and mouth move. He also designed it to sit and stand. In the early 2000s, engineer Mark Rosheim used the artist's design to create a small robot. The Scottish inventor James Watt is best known for his work on the steam engine, but he also patented a copier in 1780. The technique involved two pages. You'd write on the top page, then use the device to press it against a thinner, see-through page. The ink would get transferred to the second page in reverse, which is why you wanted it to be translucent. You could flip it over and read it from the other side. Maria Telx immigrated to the U.S. during the 1920s after getting her Ph.D. in physical chemistry at the University of Budapest. She went on to become an important solar energy power innovator during the 1940s at MIT, but in the 1970s, she also had a part in another innovation, a type of air conditioner that used salts to essentially store cool air at night. This would then keep a place cooler during the warm part of the next day, which conserved power. Charles Babbage was a major early computer pioneer. He also suffered from double vision, so he invented the first ophthalmoscope, which involved using a mirror to reflect light into a patient's eye. The device also had an opening that a doctor could look through to see the inner eye. Babbage ended up abandoning the idea because the doctor he was working with wasn't convinced the device worked. He was short-sighted, literally, and didn't see the value in it. As a student, the doctor had been caught up in the Burke and Hare murders, which apparently made the doctor, quote, temperamentally resistant to innovation, according to The Lancet. Eventually, Hermann Helmholtz designed an ophthalmoscope independently. Catherine Burr Blodgett's most famous invention was non-reflective glass, which helps prevent glare and distortion. It was first used during the 1930s in the film industry, but then went on to change cars, eyeglasses, and even submarines forever. But Blodgett also came up with a way to de-ice airplane wings, which was hugely important during World War II. In addition to being airplane innovators, the Wright brothers were bicycle innovators. They created bicycles called the St. Clair and the Van Cleve. In the early 20th century, they took a St. Clair and added wing-like parts so they could experiment with airplane wings. Dr. Flossie Wong Stahl was the first person to clone, then genetically map, HIV, an accomplishment that led to successful HIV testing. In her work with the virus, she also invented a molecular knife. This knife was actually an enzyme that could cut through genetic information in cells. As Thomas Edison once said, I have gotten a lot of results. I know several thousand things that won't work. So let's finish up with a few lesser known Thomas Edison inventions that were not as successful as the light bulb. Edison's first ever patent was for a voting machine. He wanted to incorporate it into the DC and Massachusetts state legislature voting process. Legislators would each be given a switch which they could flip to yes or no. Each switch was electrically connected to a recorder that tallied the votes. But politicians didn't like the idea. It would have sped up the process too much and prevented things like certain filibustering techniques and, you know, just general time wasting. Edison also made an electric pen. As you held it over paper, it would punch holes so it was actually more like a stencil. That allowed it to make multiple copies of text at once. It was successful for a bit and eventually fell out of favor, but 
Samuel F. O'Reilly used it as his inspiration when he invented the electric tattoo needle. During the 1920s, Edison created a device that was supposed to use light to distinguish tiny particles that came from deceased individuals. He didn't believe in ghosts per se, but he did think there was still evidence of people's personalities hanging around in the air after they died. Finally, Edison released a terrifying talking doll in 1890 that would give Chucky a run for his money. Each Edison talking doll was two feet tall, weighed four pounds, and was equipped with a miniature version of Edison's phonograph technology. On each cylinder were nursery rhymes, and a child got the doll to speak through a speaker in its chest by winding a crank on its back. But the dolls broke easily and definitely looked like they came to life at night. Plus, they cost up to $20 each, which would be about $575 today. The dolls were a huge failure, and Edison yanked them from stores after they'd been out for just a few weeks. But audio of the dolls still exists, so let's take a listen. Sweet dreams! Thanks for watching Mental Floss video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and put away any creepy, potentially haunted dolls. We'll see you next time.